I said to you Crimson King, Lorna Doone or King's Favourite, you'd probably think I was talking about racehorses or 19th century novels. Well, you'd be wrong, because they're apples. Beautiful British apples. <laughs> The first cultivated apple found in Britain is believed to date back as far as 2000 BC, but we've been growing them ever since, and the UK is now home to over 6,000 varieties. I'm in the county of Somerset where there seem to be orchards everywhere, and you can't go more than a mile without coming across one. But of course, Somerset is far more famous for what they make from the apples rather than the apples themselves cider, otherwise known as scrumpy or rough. And believe you me, I can talk from personal experience here, if you drink too much, rough is exactly how you're going to feel. Here at Sheppey Cider Farm, they're producing a huge range of traditional and award-winning ciders for over 200 years. So David, how long have you been involved with apples, or around apples? I've been involved in the family business for 20 years, ever since I left school. How many varieties of apples do you grow here? Because there's We hundreds. have about 30 different varieties, um, all traditional um, cider apple varieties. How long does it take before a tree becomes almost viable? I mean, because some trees are very old here. And well, in this particular orchard here, we've got trees ageing anything from a couple of years up to 100 years old. 100 years old? These trees will take about 10 to 15 years before they're reaching sort of full production yields. So Dave, just run through briefly the actual cider year, as it okay, were. Okay, well it starts in October, November time when we're actually pressing apples. Yep. Um, that means obviously picking them off, the off from the orchards, taking them to the mill, crushing them and extracting the juice. Uh -huh. The juice is then put into a fermentation fat where it's allowed to ferment. After fermentation, which lasts about six weeks, it's then allowed to mature. It would then be bottled and sold throughout the year. Can I make cider at home? I mean, if, I mean, if I had to pick up some of these apples, for instance, and just crush them, is, 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 is it as simple as that? Yes, yeah, so there are, there are mini presses you can buy, mini mills and presses you can buy for your own sort of home, home production unit. Right. Um, Does it work? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know, I've never tried it myself on that scale, but um, uh, no reason why it shouldn't if you have the right fruit and you have the right uh, sort of storage vessels. Yeah. I'm going to try it. It was in the Middle Ages that cider production really took off. All farms had orchards and presses as a sideline so they could pay their labourers with cider. If a farmer didn't produce cider, he would find it very difficult to hire casual labour. So Martin, you're the, the head orchard man, as they tell me. <laughs> and um, how, does he pay you in cider or does he pay you money? <laughs> no, I don't think I could drink that much cider, unfortunately. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but you do taste it every day, don't you? Yeah, I usually have a drink before my dinner, just to make sure the cider is up to scratch. Well, how can you tell when they're ready? I mean, I look at these, these apples here, for instance. To me, they look ripe and ready to go. Yeah, so what, you yeah. don't pick them, do you? Uh, no, we, we let them fall naturally, then they are naturally ripe. Right. But the, the tell is, if you can squeeze, put your thumb through and the juice comes out, then that's usually a sign that they are ripe to be made. Years ago, they used to pick them up, obviously by hand. Did you pick them up by hand, or have you ever picked them up by hand? I started to when I, when I first came here, I used to pick quite a few up by hand, but we used to have a hand machine that we used to walk behind that used to put them into uh, like 20 pound baskets and we used to pick the basket up from the machine and then tip into a trailer or boxes wherever we were doing it at the time. And how do you do it nowadays? Uh, we've got a tractor mounted machine there, yeah. which is a godsend. <laughs> yeah, I got to see that. Yeah. I ain't got a brand new combine harvester, I'll give you the key. Come on now, let's get together in perfect harmony. Once the apples are collected, they are taken to the yard and tipped into the apple hopper for cleaning. From there, they go onto the mill for crushing. Once the apples have been pulped, they're then pumped through this pipe here into this rather large hopper. Now, as you can see here, they're putting in racks, on top of which they're putting a hair. Now, the hair is basically a cloth that used to be made of horse hair. And then roughly 70 pounds of pulp is pumped into there and spread out very carefully like that, folded over, re-racked, the process starts again. Something like 30 layers there. It's then moved along and pressed. Pressed in two stages. This first stage is 100 tonnes pressing. It then moves around by hand to the second pressing, which is 300 tonnes. All the juice comes out. You get something like 180 gallons of juice, 800 litres. That's a lot of juice. <laughs> The apple juice is then piped into oak vats for fermentation to eventually become cider. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? God, look at this. So, 
when the juice is pressed, they've it's pumped into these huge barrels. I mean, this one here is enormous. Yes, that one's uh, about five and a half thousand gallons or 25 to 30,000 litres. So, tell me about the fermentation process. This is pumped into these barrels and then left for how long? The fermentation lasts about six weeks. And basically, the fermentation process is the yeast um, changing the sugars in the apple to alcohol.